everyone, Maureen from Sophia Street Studio here, and my art experiment today is what to do with your old jelly plate that you no longer are successful printing with. This is a homemade jelly plate. This will not work with a commercial jelly plate, so please don't try this if you have a store-bought jelly plate. This is only for the home glycerin, gelatin, and water plate. A lot of people have spoken about what to do if it doesn't set up right or if you mark the surface, but I've never seen anyone that has a two-year-old or almost two-year-old plate and see if we can revive this and bring it back to life. I am going to add in a little bit of hot water when I remelt and re-pour this just because it's not the same consistency it was. It's much more rubbery and the paint, when I pull a print, it is not coming off. I am not sure if you can see this, but it has beautiful dimension to it that you don't get with a newer jelly plate. I made these for a pocket letter and because the paint did not come off as easily, you can see not sure if it's picking it up in the camera, but there's a lot of dimension here. There's several layers. It's thicker than you would see with a typical print that would pull off and have a thin layer of paint, even when you build them up. Let me see if I can find one that really has a lot of dimension to it. This one might show up better. I'm getting a lot of white because it had white. But here, I mean, there's about six layers. Ooh, I think we can see it. Success. You can see there's almost clumps of paint but it turned out perfectly for this project and I absolutely love it. It's just not what I used to get with my new plate when it was fresh. And as I said, this one has been sitting in this container for almost two years and I've used it on and off. I haven't used this in about six months, I would say. So in that six months, it got significantly harder, less, flexible and it shrunk more. I'm just going to cut it into about an inch chunks and we'll see if this works. It may work, it may not work. I've never seen anyone that had a lot of paint on their plate. It seems like when they remelt it, it's pretty clean. Just using scissors from the Dollar Tree. It's really easy to cut. I'm cutting a Jello Jiggler. I'm going to add a teensy bit of water. Not a lot of water at all. Just enough to wet the pieces to facilitate them melting a little bit more. I'll go melt this in the microwave and I will be right back. Alright, I'm back. I wanted to show you what it looks like as it's turning back into liquid. You get all this floaty chunks of acrylic paint and it looks really gross. But this was after a minute. I ended up adding a quarter cup of water to the existing plate material. And I'm going to keep heating it until it's all liquefied. But this was after one minute this in my microwave, that's what it looks like. It took three minutes in the microwave to melt back down to liquid, and I took it out after each minute and stirred it. So you saw it after one minute, after two minutes there was still some chunks of the gelatin plate left, and after three minutes it was perfect. I'm actually going to change my mind and put it in this glass Pyrex container because this will give me a perfect size jelly plate for card fronts, which I like to make. 
and I like that better because it'll have a nice flat bottom instead of this. There's no sense remaking it in this container that was not the best to begin with. All right. It's interesting because if you melt it in the microwave, you end up getting a lot fewer bubbles than when I made it from scratch using the recipe in my other video, which I will link below after I post that. What's really interesting to me right now is all of the or most of the paint chips are staying on the bottom of the mixing bowl. They aren't in the liquid that I pour and pouring into the plate. Whoa, oh, one went in there. Can you see that? All the paint nuggets are in the bottom there. That's kind of cool. I'm gonna try and actually get this one that snuck in there out. I don't think it's a huge deal. Well, no, I'm not going to get that out after all. <laughs> but when you melt it back down, if you don't pour it all back in, you're going to end up with most of the paint residue in there, which is cool. Now, one thing you need to keep in mind, I have specific materials, measuring things for my arts and crafts because I don't want to use food in the containers that I'm melting plastic in. I just don't think, it might be fine, but I'm just not a fan of that. I ended up buying just cheap measuring cups at the Dollar Tree and it had the measuring spoons as well. Well, And then this is a Pyrex bowl, measuring bowl that I got at the thrift store. So that way I have separate ones for my food and separate ones for my crazy art experiments. This is good for now. I'm going to let it set up. It's going to take quite a while. It ended up being pretty thick because it's a smaller container than the last plate. The bubbles on the top don't matter because you print on the side that's facing down. But since there was only that one, I have eradicated it. All right. I will be back after this sets up and show you how it turned out. Hi everyone, it is the next day and my jelly plate has completely set up in the container. It's nice and firm. It ended up being a lot thicker than I expected it would be and using the smaller pan it ended up being thicker. It doesn't necessarily need to be this thick but it won't hurt so I'm just going to leave it. The next part of this process is to get it out of the pan. Now, some people have talked about taking a knife and cutting around the edge to separate it, but all you really need to do is get air under part of it, and then the whole thing's gonna pop out. If you cut it, you're gonna end up getting um, very uneven, like jagged edges around the top. It's not the end of the world, but I prefer to just very, very gently, if you can see what I'm doing here. Let me try and zoom in. So I am just pulling it away from the side. You still can't really see it. Ah, there we go. So instead of cutting it, what I choose to do is pull it away from the side of the container. As you can see, it's... You don't want to do it quickly or it's going to tear. But if you do it nice and slowly, it's going to very easily pull away from the side. And once it's loose like this, and you get a corner of it, you're going to end up being able to pop it out of the container. Some people put their jelly plate on a piece of plexiglass. I personally don't want to spend all that money on a sheet of plexiglass. That's just me. I use the cheap 
cutting mats from the Dollar Tree, which I will show you in a minute. As you can see, this is pulling away from the sides. Ooh, <laughs> like a sucking noise. And once you do that on one corner, Now it's a little more difficult with this one because it's so thick, but once you get the one corner going, the rest of it pretty much comes out easily. All right, now that I have gotten the corner out, the rest will just easily, very, very easily pull out. What's interesting now that I look at it, when I was pouring this into the container, I had mentioned that most of the paint flecks stayed in the bowl, but now that I take this out after it's sat here all night, the paint flecks are in the this side of the plate. All right, now we are totally out of the container. the The paint flecks are in there, but this surface is completely smooth and this is going to be perfect for prints. You can see how shiny it is. And you can probably see the little flecks of paint that are in there because as I said this is a two-year-old plate that I cut down, added a quarter cup of water and remelted and that it definitely needed that liquid because otherwise it would be way too stiff. This is going to be perfect I wanted to show you what I use to put it on when I'm using it to print, make prints. This is a craft and activity mat. I got it at the Dollar Tree and they had some other colors. I think they had red and black. But this is absolutely perfect for my purposes with my jelly plate. I don't need to have an expensive piece of plexiglass. That's just my choice. I wanted to keep this project cheap. I don't want to invest a lot of money in it. So when you're making your prints, you simply take it out of the container. I'm going to put it right in the middle. I'm going to try to print on some old notebook paper that I have lying around. I have not tried that before the best craft paint to use. This is a little tacky still, but it should be good. Is the cheap acrylic craft paint. This is Craft Smart in bright yellow and Apple Barrel in cobalt blue. I wanted to use these two colors because they'll mix a little bit and I'll get some green in there as well. The hardest part of the jelly plate, I think, is Figuring out how much paint to use so you don't have too much, but you have enough. You don't want to be too shy. Just squirt it on there. And there are so many good videos about how to use and make jelly prints. I just want to show this to you on camera so you can see how this one works that I've had for two years. Mix that up a little bit. Always have a sheet on the side to clean off your brayer. You'll also notice with jelly printing that no matter how big of an art space you have, you need a bigger art space because it takes a lot of space to have enough room for your prints and your paper that you haven't yet printed and your roll off paper, which ends up looking really cool. And I'm going to take a paintbrush. I've never seen anyone use a paintbrush. There's lots of different texture tools. And I thought, hey, this is just an old soft bristle paintbrush. I thought this might be fun to leave some marks without harming the plate. We've got some squiggles, maybe some circles. I'm just twisting the brush. Oh, that looks cool. You never know, though, 
Sometimes it looks really cool and then you go to print it and it looks pretty ordinary or vice versa. You think, oh, that's not going to work. That's going to look terrible. And it looks gorgeous. Okay, I kind of have a starry night thing going on here. Clean off my brush a little bit. And let's see what we've got. I'm putting the notebook paper so that I only have the lines. I don't end up with the red line or the holes. Of course, that'll be different depending on what size you decide to make it. And our first print. Ooh, I really like it. I really, really like that. Oh, that's fun. Okay. I don't have any more paper. I should have brought more paper down. Let's, let's print on the back of this. Why not? Oh, jelly plates are so much fun. Ooh, that was a terrible noise. You usually get at least two prints off of every layer of paint you put down. That one's awesome as well. That looks really cool because it's on the glossy paper. Let me rip this in half. And in order to get what's the rest of that that's on there, I'm going to put some more paint down. This is craft paint that needs to be used up. It's old and it needs, it's, could use